Okay, so welcome to the live order flow advanced analysis. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, for more information, go to bookmap.com. Become a member there. You have the access to all the free resources. Uh, and um, uh, this is one of them. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, just for those that are in trial, uh, or our current customers, uh, so so uh, uh, you can understand uh, better without being distracted by a lot of uh, platform education questions, uh, which we hold earlier uh, at 10:30. You, you're welcome to come to those as well. It's, it's no problem. I've seen a lot of you guys in there, uh, which is great. Uh, so uh, uh, ask your questions there, uh, and then here though we're going to go through uh, you know how to apply uh, order flow. Uh, in the live markets here, all right? Okay, and reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, if you guys are uh, uh, new to the room here and you're um, uh, in for uh, just, just the day here uh, as, a, as a guest, uh, there's two different types of uh, bookmap uh, versions available, basic and advanced, and the difference between the two uh, is the, uh, the one-click trading and uh, the add-ons here. Okay, and uh, ask any questions on the add-ons uh, as well. I'd be happy to happy to go through those. Uh, and um, uh, there's also DX feed, but this is uh, it's the basic and advanced, the same versions, but is packaged with DX feed. Now the DX feed is not for futures; it's only for U.S. equities. Okay, it includes Nasdaq total view and last sale. Okay, it's an excellent uh, data feed, uh, really low latency, uh, and um, uh, full depth of market, uh, really uh, very powerful. In fact, uh, uh, some of the futures feeds are also now offering uh, full depth of market. Okay, you, uh, I'm using one uh, through Rhythmic. Uh, also, CQG I know has a few a few different um, uh, markets that have full depth now as well. Okay, and uh, you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. Um, okay, so that's. Uh, uh, book map where you can find it. Now you get a 14-day trial period with it. Okay, so you get into trial, and then uh, you'll you'll also be able to attend these um, uh, live order flow advanced analysis um, uh, webinars. Okay, uh, let's go over just uh, following us on Twitter here uh, for more up-to-date information, uh, and then you can also go to uh, our and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, be updated here on uh, features and components, some of the uh, order flow video snippets. It's just phenomena that we cover here during the live analysis, uh, but it's a lot more concise uh, and um, very specific for only one uh, type of, of event or phenomena. Uh, and then uh, recommend uh, highly uh, for you guys to uh, go through the education course here. Okay, you'll understand what you're looking at, how these markets trade, and then uh, how to uh, start to understand the transparency of software such as Bookmap. Right? Okay. Let's move on and take a look at these markets. Okay. A few other questions here. Uh, let's see. Huh, okay, Ying, I I don't know what um, I I know that you're 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 um, uh, there's there's been some delays I think from uh, your uh, your email or something that like uh, uh, why support has not uh, not reached. Um, I, I reached out to them. Uh, uh, why why they haven't gotten back to you? I, I reached out to them and uh, uh, they said that uh, they they didn't even see it. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, and then, uh, like a few minutes later, they said that uh, it it just arrived. So I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, I, I'll definitely help you out. Okay. All right. Good. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's let's dive in and start to uh, uh, look at the uh, the order flow here and look at. Um, uh, we'll start with kind of a bigger picture here, uh, and um, there's some really good stuff here in oil that we can go through, but uh, let's see, Darcy had uh, reached out earlier, and she wanted to take a look at the S&P E-mini, uh, so uh, let's, we'll take a look at that uh, first, and then uh, maybe uh, uh, you know keep on the back burner here looking at oil, because um, 
uh, some some nice stuff there at the figure at 48 uh, today. Okay, uh, and and look look for these things. Uh, I think you're going to find it really helpful uh, uh, looking for you know some of these um, uh, price movements in oil because um, uh, they're always hovering around that uh, large figure. I mean, any market really is, but um, uh, this was just a good example. All right. Okay, so. Usually what we do here is uh, just very simple methodologies of looking at higher time frames uh, just to have some sort of structure to, to then, you know, wrap some lines around uh, in, in book map uh, so that we understand um, uh, where can we can expect some sort of uh, order flow and behavior. Uh, and uh, looking at the S&P E-mini, I'm looking at a half hour chart here. Uh, and uh, you can see the, uh, the the low here yesterday, nice big sell-off yesterday. Uh, and then uh, you can see the um, uh, little little whippy action here, just uh, at at um, uh, in the morning, uh, a, a dip down in the uh, uh, below the uh, 2430 here. Okay, and then we see the move to the upside. Okay. So uh, this is uh, around some uh, some data as well, the CPI data, uh, and um, and then where where have we gone? We've gone up. We're starting to see wicks on both sides here, but this cluster of uh, activity here is of interest. Okay, uh, this is where we saw the drop yesterday. So there's going to be uh, sellers. Uh, maybe they're looking to sell up at some of these levels again uh, for price to come back down. All right. So uh, we'll take a look here, uh, but I want to be aware of uh, this area around here, around, well, 48, 2448 on up to 2450. Okay, there's, again, that uh, that figure uh, is going to be of interest, all right? Uh, also, too, uh, I can also look at uh, this horizontal line here. This is where we broke from. And we saw that uh, buyers on a wick here that they, they came right back in around uh, 37, 38, uh, and supported price. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll f find buyers down here again at around 37, uh, 36, 37 area. Let's take a look. Okay, what does it look like? Let's go to the S and P, and let me zoom out. Okay. Okay, actually, I, I have the data here from. Uh, uh, the little test of the low, okay, and then here's the cash open right here, all right, and uh, so let's uh, let's take a look here. So what what exactly is uh, uh, going on here? We see the interest uh, buying interest uh, down here between 36 and 35, okay. We see high liquidity coming in. Uh, and uh, and then we see a quick move uh, away from that, okay? And where where does it go? Uh, it's going up, uh, trying to find liquidity so it can trade, uh, and it's finding it here, a longer term liquidity uh, up at this 40, 24, 45. Okay, that's what we go into, uh, and then um, some interesting stuff here. Um, it's good, good. We got some good stuff to look at. Uh, God, look at the uh, liquidity up here around. Um, you know, uh, between 47 up to up to 50, uh, and um, uh, you know, I think we're going to get a test into that. But uh, we'll continue to, to look here. Um, so we come up, we test the longer term liquidity here, we trade through or into some of it, and then we get a nice little pullback. Okay, we see them lining up again in the limit order book here, uh, and um, uh, we uh, we trade into that uh, liquidity, uh, and then we get a, a, another. Uh, extension to the upside here and break uh, highs for the day okay back up into this 46 area up here and um, uh, now we're starting to see okay a little less buying I mean we see him coming in again here and this is this is bullish okay uh, around this 42 and a half uh, but compared to the other area and this is something we've been going on uh, going over again and again uh, is context of the auction. Okay, putting the pieces together here, uh, they're pretty interested in buying here. Okay, well they're not they they show, they're showing less interest now here uh, at this area. Okay, and in fact these traders that were at 45 are back in here at 45 uh, on the offer. 
Okay, so um, uh, you know now I'm looking for just just based on this view, and we haven't even zoomed in, and we haven't even really looked at the traded volume yet. But just based on this activity here, in context of the auction, uh, I think we're probably going to get a test down to this 42 area, 41, 42 area. Okay, uh, and um, uh, just based on uh, you know less less uh, uh, buying um, interest here. Uh, and then now they're starting to show up here. Um, we just saw a little bit uh, around 41. Okay, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But let's continue on. Uh, and um, uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I don't know if I should cover some of the microstructure structures first, or should we just uh, zoom in to uh, to current price? Yeah, I mean, because there's a bunch of different things going on here. I mean, one of the things that, um, uh, and we see, we see this again and again, look how the initiated buying took place here, okay, in the S&P, right? So this is uh, around 41, right, uh, 24, 41, uh, and uh, let's see, this is around what time, uh, 10.07, okay? Uh, and um, basically what's going on here? Okay, let me draw a few lines in. Okay, we have a structure break here. Okay, there, our structure is uh, this little area here. Okay, sideways consolidation and a break of that structure. And we see aggressive buying continuing to lift the offer to go up and test the highs of the day where there's high liquidity here. Okay, so that said, now this is just something to always look for. Uh, because you're going to see it again and again. Look where we retest. Okay, look how, let me zoom in here a little bit closer. Okay. Okay, the break The break happened here, right? But where did the volume really start to pick up? Okay, any, anyone have an answer for that? Where did the volume start to pick up on this break? At what price level? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, around, around. Uh, well, yeah. It, uh, let's to be precise. Let's say, um, well, it's it's a zone, um, but uh, you, you can see it here uh, around um, a twenty four forty one and a quarter. And look at the green buying, the dots here, the green aggressive market buys, uh, lifting the offer. They're taking liquidity. They're sweeping the book higher. Okay, this this action of sweeping the book. Uh, this is something we cover. Uh, in the uh, the book map education course, uh, day one, okay, part part one, right? So this is where they're buying, okay? We come back and we test those buyers again here uh, to the tick, right to 24, 41 and a quarter, right here, okay? You're going to see it again and again, all right? It comes back to where it initiated, and are they still supporting price here? Okay. Now the limit order book is giving us a little different picture. They they were actually a little bit higher here, uh, and you can see the line of liquidity at 42, and then they pulled. Okay. And um, uh, let's zoom into this little area right here. Okay. And uh, I'm still not seeing high liquidity here. Okay. And that that's fine. Uh, but we but we want to see though is like uh you know now now if we don't have that liquidity to go on we're going to look at the trading traded volume right and uh, we see some selling interest in some of these areas here it's it's counteracted with some buying as we can see uh, in this area here okay and then look at the the contracts that traded down here 164 right not not many in the bigger picture okay there's you know just a couple ticks higher there's thousands trading. Right, and then here again is where we find the buyers. Okay, right here. Actually, maybe a little bit earlier, but really, it, it, this is where they they lifted the offer and swept the book uh, to the high side. Okay, so uh, it just kind of went sideways for a little bit, and there was a lack of selling here. Okay, there's no interest, uh, and um, uh, once you start to see that, and once you start to see the buyers uh, jump in here, okay, uh, we're going to come up and test 45 again. Okay. Or maybe we hadn't at that time. Oh, we had. Okay. And we did again. 
and we and we did once again here and and trade through okay and made new highs all right so uh that's one of the things to look for uh in the order flow okay where did they start to initiate and sweep the book higher uh and start to commit themselves uh to one side or the other okay and uh, start to anticipate uh, some sort of action down here uh, and uh, you know it depends there's a there's a lot of different things you might get distribution up in these areas here but I don't see that distribution okay I don't see like a big head and shoulders or uh, you know a double top or I don't, I don't see a real shift in the order flow either I see some selling in this area here uh, and a little bit here as well uh, but um, uh, the uh, the buyers are, are uh, you know still uh, in in this trade uh, and then they start to buy more here okay so it's kind of a wicked little move to the downside here it broke structure and it totally rejected and these sellers are, are going to cover up in these areas here and, uh, and it looks like they did all right okay so uh, anyway, it fits into the whole plan, and this is one of the strategies that we go through and cover in part three. Okay, understanding uh, uh, this this area here uh, where the order flow, uh, we can clearly read it. All right, in that S and P. Okay, we have a break of structure, right, uh, and then uh, and then we see uh, uh, buying uh, move price to a new structure. Okay, and that new structure and new zone uh, is let me draw it out it's actually a few different things okay there's one here okay the bigger picture of that structure okay and there's another structure within it right here okay and that's where the that's where these guys that were selling are looking for the breakdown right into though where they were buying previously okay and uh, and and that's that's all you get all right the buyer step right back in okay so kind of trappy in this little area right here. Uh, but uh, this is holding true between the volume that traded, uh, what we see in the limit order book up at 45, right? And then uh, and we see them support again here with the uh, aggressive buying to the upside, right? Let me clear all the drawings here, okay? So that uh, we can uh, see it a little bit clearer. Any questions on that? All right, so uh, very um, uh, clearly, uh, just looking looking for that clarity, okay? And we're getting it here, all right? Now, obviously, that's hindsight, but uh, we do this in real time all the time. Uh, we did an oil just, uh, you know, 30 minutes ago. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the S&P and what's going on now, okay? All right, we, we were looking, actually, we were looking um, uh, for the... Uh, a potential uh, move to the downside uh, before this happened here, all right? Uh, and uh, and testing uh, 41 again, right? Somewhere around here, uh, or maybe I said 42. I can't recall. Um, but um, uh, the um, uh, and why did I say that, right? Well, because uh, we, we were starting to note. Um, how the uh, aggressive uh, orders here at 45 jumping back in uh, and then uh, started to note that uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, selling okay break a structure again selling uh, and then we see the follow through here to the downside okay starting to anticipate that move and uh, and we got it okay so now what about this 41 area okay it's gonna be it's gonna get interesting here Okay, why? Uh, because uh, this is where they bought previously, but they're not supporting it any longer. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see if let's see if this this area here now, okay, in real time, uh, if they start to um, uh, you know show some size here in that limit order book. Boy, I, I've got this thing pretty. Let me uh, let me adjust my uh, contrast configurations a little bit. It's a little too high for me. Okay. Okay. I want to see some of the detail here, so I, I'm lowering it down uh, so I can see that in the heat map. Okay. Uh, because uh, usually I just target that uh, high liquidity I'm interested in, but um, 
Uh, I want a little more information. I want to see where they're starting to line up here. All right. Okay. So again, uh, I mean, we might see a flip here uh, of um, uh, interest. Uh, there might be a lot more selling interest that, that comes in here around this 41 area. And so far, not really. They're actually up a little higher now at 42. Okay. And let's use the same phenomena or the same um, concepts that we've just been going through. Okay. We broke structure here at around 43. Okay. And uh, the selling, and it, it's not, it's not as clear as, as previously, right? We see the selling here. Okay. And we see them pulling the, this liquidity in this area here. Uh, and, um, but it's not like previously, it's, it's less so, less selling or less volume uh, than previous. Okay. So I, I don't, that, that gives me a little less clarity. Uh, I want to see more commitment on that. Uh, but uh, we're coming back up to where we originally broke from here. Okay. And we're finding that there's, um, you know, there's responsive sellers here. All right. They're here in the limit order book with high liquidity. Okay. And look at the sell off. It just occurred really quickly. All right. So um, uh, someone swept the book completely uh, just, just now. Okay, and uh, it's, it's too bad that happened a little too quickly. What I'm what I was trying to get at was the same thing. I'm, I'm starting to anticipate sellers here because this is where we broke from, uh, and this is where uh, the sellers will support it. Okay, the one thing I did not like about it though was it's it's uh, look at the size of the dots uh, and the volume and the commitment. It's less so than previously. Okay, whereas we had a lot more clarity here. Uh, in this area, okay. This is this is good action, okay. This is a little. This is not not quite as clear, All right? Still held true, uh, but um, uh, and it was sub being supported here in the in the in the book. I do like that. All right, seeing these guys come in at 42, and also up here a little bit higher. Okay. Now this is this is also showing bearish activity. They were here previously at 42 and a half. And then they, they're uh, now here a little bit lower at 42. All right. Now look at them, look at them here uh, at, uh, at 39 and a quarter starting to pull. Okay. Let's see if we see that continuation here. Let's see them drive price lower. Okay. Big red dots, right? We want to see that uh, uh, sweeping of the book uh, lower, right? We're are we breaking into a new range here or not? Or are we going to reject? Okay, let's get a feel for it by looking at the color uh, of these dots. It, it signifies that, uh, you know, the more aggressive buyers or more aggressive sellers. Okay, and it's kind of equal uh, at the moment. The, the aggressive selling right here, very clearly, a little bit more in this area, not much. But then here, obviously, aggressive selling was, uh, uh, you know, so let's see if we come back up to 40 now. And let's see if they start selling again. Okay, this is microstructural. Uh, you know, bigger picture would be looking at uh, where they really sold here around 41 and a quarter. Okay, that 41 and a quarter is the same. Our line is still here, right? That was the same area that we were looking at previously. Okay. Okay, any, any questions on this? You understand that the, you know, we're, we're, what we're doing here, uh, we're not looking at any indicators. Uh, we're not, we're, we're just judging uh, and we're getting a direct insight to the uh, current and historical uh, condition of the auction and the transactions, okay? Where they were lining up to bid and offer and where the transactions actually occurred. I'm not looking at any sort of like derivative of price, time, or anything else. I'm just gauging the uh, the order flow, okay? And I start to anticipate price activity based on uh, reading the order flow. Uh, no, Brian, this is not a, a trade calling room. Uh, it uh, It's not a trade signal service, okay? But that said, uh, you know why? Uh, because we're not we're we're not a, a, a trading uh, 
uh, call service. That's that's not what we do. Uh, we're a, we're a trading platform. Uh, but uh, I, I'm I'm basically you know showing you. I'm teaching you uh, how to use this tool uh, so that in in the live market so that uh, you can do it. Okay, so that you can read the order flow. Uh, and um, uh, the um, Oh, <laughs> you think it's a compliment? Okay. I, well, thank you, Brian. Um, uh, no, I appreciate that. Um, but, but um, it, you know, I, I have to be kind of careful uh, with that. Um, we can anticipate uh, a price movement based on uh, what we read here, but we're very objectively reading this. It, it's it's something that anyone can do, uh, and uh, that's why we we have this service so that you guys can. Uh, put this together uh, and um, understand it, uh, how, how, how to use it. it, it it's, and you know, what, what I, where I, um, I think uh, sometimes we, we lose a lot of, uh, a lot of traders here because this looks very foreign. It's something new and unique. Um, you know, you know, myself included, you know, I used to look at some sort of, uh, you know, a, a structure with uh, combined with an indicator and maybe a candlestick pattern. Uh, well, you know, now uh, I don't need that. Uh, those are derivatives for me. Uh, now I can I can forget all of that information. Uh, and um, now I can start to understand really the condition of the market current and, and uh, uh, recently uh, historical. OK, so uh, that's um, uh, that's the benefit here. So if, if you guys are, are, you know, really clued into a specific way, we can we can cover uh, what it is you might be looking at at your level. Uh, and I'd be happy to go over that. Uh, but um, uh, the um, uh, re reading the um, the tape, uh, you know, the, the order flow uh, and then also reading the auction. Uh, is where you're going to get the insight here uh, with this tool, okay? And it, I know it looks like it's complex, but, uh, you know, what, what works the best for me, and it, it was really a big jump. Uh, I was a client just like uh, you guys, uh, and, um, uh, and then uh, just uh, continue to use replay mode, uh, record my data, uh, start to understand uh, behavior of liquidity, uh, and put the pieces together, okay? Uh, and what, what the big jump for me was really truly understanding this is an auction. And now I'm starting to read the behavior of that auction. So the, I think the best way and clearest way that might be to um, uh, cover that is if you guys are reading volume, and there's a lot of volume profile or market profile uh, traders out there looking at your high volume nodes, low volume nodes, valley area, high, low, et cetera. Okay. Now, when you're reading your volume, you're also doing the same thing. You're putting it into context. Okay. Anything can happen at any time, and we know that. Um, but based on the majority of the traders and based on what we see uh, in the traded volume, you start to anticipate price activity okay? uh, and integrate that within uh, a high probability strategy that you've studied. Okay, you're going to do the same thing here now with liquidity. Okay, so we're going to we're going to read it contextually. Okay, so for example, um, you know, reading the let's let me let me just uh, I'll take go through a simple example here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take off the heat map. Okay, and we're just going to look at volume. Okay, and I'm I'm actually going to take off our iceberg indicator as well uh, here. So uh, we're just looking at traded volume. Okay. Uh, and we're, we're, we want to read the, um, uh, you know, the majority of the uh, transactions uh, to give us insight to what might occur. All right. And I see one right off the bat. All right. I mean, we can see that the sellers here coming in. Okay. We read that earlier. Right. And this is microstructural stuff. However, it's still holding true. Selling initiated here. Where do we come back and test? Right to where they initiated. Are they still here? Yes, they are. Okay. So context of those sellers. And look at the buyers up in here. Do you see a lot of buying pulling price up? No. You see it here. Okay. But then you see it, them waning in this area here. 
right? And instead, they hit the bid pretty hard, okay? And they come down into this area, okay? Now, um, for those of you looking at that volume, and this is where Bookmap is nice, just showing the volume, because uh, you might not see this in your footprint chart. Uh, nice cluster of, uh, of selling volume here, but we get a, a little retest here in the microstructure, okay? And uh, let's we can just zoom into that area. Click on that hand tool, hover over this area here. Let me get rid of this. All right, and hover over this area and just use your center mouse wheel and zoom in, okay? Actually, zooming out will, might be a little bit clearer. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, now we get a retest here. Okay, are, are the sellers still here? Not really. I mean, uh, look at look at how much how much selling is occurring here at this area now. Okay, so you on your retest, you're double bottom and you have less selling interest. Okay, I'm looking for them to start lifting the offer. I'm looking for the aggressive buyers to step in now. Okay, I'm not going to start buying it uh, yet. Uh, I mean, you could, uh, if you really want to have reduced risk, that's up to you. Uh, you know, that's your trading strategy. Okay. But, uh, I'm looking for that order flow shift to change. I'm looking for maybe the structure to break and I'm looking for initiated buying to come in and, and they, and they do, uh, in this area here. Okay. Uh, and, um, so it's a little close for me. I, 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 you know, to see if the sellers are up here still, because this is where we broke from. Uh, we, that's exactly where we come back. We actually test a tick higher, okay? Uh, and we're still up here, right? So uh, anyway, uh, there you go, just reading the traded volume, okay? Putting those pieces together, okay? In this area right here, in this little double double bottom, in that retest, okay? Uh, and um, uh, so it's it's that context that I'm reading, though. I'm putting I'm putting the pieces together in the context of the uh, of the traded volume, okay? And that context here was telling me something, okay? But I, I still want to see if the buyers are interested. All right, so that's uh, that's contextually reading this, and um, uh, you know you can look at your volume profiles over here in your in your columns uh, as well. Uh, and, um, you know, in this big area here, maybe this is like some sort of value area low. I, I, I don't know. Um, let's see, uh, Michael, I'll reach out to you on that one. Uh, if you want to give me the uh, value area low for the uh, session that you have here for the S&P. Uh, but uh, I'm curious, see if it might be around this 38 and three quarters area. Um, okay, so that's the context of the volume that we're reading here. Okay, and, and putting those pieces together. Now let's do the opposite here, and I, I recommend that you uh, you do this exercise. Uh, this is this helped me, uh, you know, see the clarity. Okay, now let's take the volume off. Okay, I don't have volume. I'm not going to be uh, influenced by volume here. Okay, but I'm going to read the auction. All right, I'm going to read the uh, the the um, where they're lining up uh, to to buy and sell. All right, and um, uh, value area, okay, thank you, Darcy, 39 and a quarter. Okay, so it's actually um, not not bad, not bad. I was thinking um, I was thinking maybe this 38 and three quarters. Value area high, 45 uh, and three quarters. Okay, 45 and three quarters. 45 and three quarters? No, yeah, okay. All right. Um, value rate low thirty-eight and three quarters. Great. Okay. Well, we're we're in the, we're in the game there. We're in the hunt. Um, so just by just by looking at this and the distribution. All right. So uh, there you go. You know. Uh, uh, you know. We can we can just even kind of eyeball it a, a little bit there uh, and get some uh, get some insight. Um, Okay, Darcy, you're looking at your uh, two-tick Renko. Um, that's what uh, it's based on. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, we um, uh, we don't have the, uh, the the volume here now. Okay. Now we're going to read the auction. All right. Well, high liquidity over here uh, previously. Okay. And we break that structure, and and we can read the liquidity here. Like th these guys, they got cold feet as price came down. Right. In fact, we can see uh, some uh, uh, short-term high liquidity pressing on the other side. Okay. Very aggressive. 
pressing on price. Uh, it's short term because it's high because it's, it's white and it's short term because it only stays in the book for a little bit. And then these guys get cold feet and they pull. Okay? And they don't want to be buyers here any longer. Okay? And they start to line up down here in this area instead around 39 and a quarter. Okay, and uh, and not the not the most bullish behavior either. Uh, you know, they're uh, they're they're as price is coming down into these areas, they pull. As it goes away, they add back in, and then they pull. And that's not showing a lot of commitment, right? If price goes away, and they add back in to, to keep their place in line, and they're pulling, and they're adding to lower levels. Okay, this this is not uh, uh, the the most bullish behavior. If they really wanted to buy. Not only would they stay in the book here, they would probably add at higher levels, okay, like we were reading earlier in oil uh, today if you were in that webinar, okay. All right, same behavior here, though. Even, even at this level, they start to pull, okay, as price comes back down. Now, these guys at 42, they stayed in the book, right, and, uh, and there's no question about that. We see it's just been solid, and, and, the, and we don't even test into that area, okay. Around a thousand contracts up here, which is actually pretty low for the for the S and P. We don't we don't see a lot of liquidity here today. Um, but um, uh, now we're starting to see a little more activity. Now they're starting to get a little more interest down here, 38 between 38 and 38 and three quarters. So you know maybe looking at your um, uh, market mark, auction market theory, you know they're down at a value area low. They're wanting to be buyers here. Okay. And um, uh, well, this was uh, our retest, right? Yeah, right here. Uh, and um, I'll, I'll be honest, like uh, the uh, the the limit order book is still not really telling us too much here, right? Uh, in this area, I mean, they're starting to show up a little bit, right? But they they're pulling, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, I'm not getting a lot of insight uh, from it. Okay, I am over here though. Okay, look at them starting to jump in here now. Okay, on both sides, right? So this is a battle. Big battle is going to happen. You know, it's going to occur here. Uh, but um, uh, the the market doesn't find any any trading activity down here. Uh, it's not even finding liquidity. Uh, it's rotating to find where there is liquidity up here, uh, previously at 42. Okay, and then they start to jump in here uh, on both sides. Uh, interest. Okay. So um, uh, in terms of getting some sort of tip off on, on this on this liquidity here, uh, to be to be honest, like uh, again, like uh, what I'm starting to anticipate is 42 because of that longer term liquidity. Uh, but but, uh, you know, battle's going to happen here. We're going to go in a tight range and I, I can anticipate that just right here uh, that we're going to be in a tight range because they're on both sides with high liquidity. And that's exactly what occurred. Right. Uh, and then we want to see who's going to win this battle here. Okay. And that's actually unfolding in real time. Okay. And it looks like the buyers are. Okay. For the moment, it looks like the buyers are. Here we go. Okay. Just looking at the, at the book, at the action here in the book. Okay. Look at the, look at them bidding it up here and look at them pulling. Okay. I wanted to cover that right here before this actually occurred. Um, and, um, uh, you know they're 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 pulling the uh, our our traders here at 42 not interested pull to higher levels uh, now it's at 43 and a half okay look at the buying here okay they're aggressive they want to be buyers okay so based on just the book here I'm anticipating 43 and a half to, and between that and 44 to get tested okay there we go okay. I mean, boy, that was quick, um, but there it is. Okay, so I'm glad that I got there before these guys, uh, uh, you know, decided to, to get more aggressive. But just based on this aggressive behavior here in the book, I, you start to anticipate this kind of movement. All right, so very insightful. Uh, those that will say, like, uh, the dome here, uh, it, it's, it's um, uh, you can't read it. Uh, you can't trust it. They're all fake orders. Well, we just read it. All right? You can use this to your advantage. Okay. Yes, there are a lot of fake orders. Yes, there are. There is a lot of nefarious uh, activity, but we can put the pieces together. 
uh, we can read the context of the majority of them, okay? Uh, and uh, and start to uh, look for uh, markets to unfold in, in a specific uh, direction based on what we know in the auction. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's turn on the volume now and let's see what uh, where the, where they started to commit themselves in the transactions. There we go. Okay, aggressive buying. Okay, surprise, surprise. You know, I mean that's how that's how we lift up into you know new areas and break out of ranges is with the aggressive buying. Okay, what does that picture look like now? You know, they're pulling here. All right. Well, maybe this is this is going to reject and fall back down into the range now. That's that's one scenario that can really unfold here right now. Uh, let's see if they get more aggressive on the other side on the offer now. Okay, and uh, and then again. Um, this is where we broke from, and this is where the volume, most of it traded actually here at 42 and a half. And we just got, re, we just retested that area here at 42 and a half. Okay. Look at the buying up here. That's pretty dismal, right? So uh, we want to see more volume trading at higher highs. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a VWAPS, uh, Felix. So um, see this little white line here in the volume columns on the right-hand side? That's a VWAP. Okay, the, the way that um, uh, you can uh, uh, format your uh, your volume columns, just uh, right-click here uh, in a column and, uh, and then choose Format, right? And you can see the VWAP uh, format is right here, whether you want to show it or not. Okay. Now the CVP, this is stands for chart range volume profile. So this chart range that you see here, this profile is for everything within just this viewable chart range. So watch if I zoom in here. Okay. I'll zoom in really quickly with my center mouse wheel. This volume profile now reflects my chart range. Okay. If I zoom out, there's more price activity and it reflects it. And it also gives you the VWAP. So what you're alluding to there, um, uh, Felix, is yes, there are uh, many different ways and strategies if you're looking for trading VWAP of a chart range to maybe VWAP of a session. Okay. Or uh, maybe you see a breakdown of a, a microstructure, a return back to the uh, point of control in that microstructure, uh, but no support. Uh, then you're looking for maybe uh, a return back either to VWAP or POC of the uh, larger structure. All sorts of different ways of looking at this. Now, Brian, is, this actually works with um, uh, uh, quite quite a few um, uh, data providers that we have. Uh, let me uh, let me quickly show you that. Okay, it's on the website here, and just go to connectivity. Click on that. And these are the ways that you can connect Bookmap. Okay, we have a lot of different ways. Sure, yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, Glenn, you have a question. Does the platform accept data feed from TD Ameritrade? No, it does not. Um, uh, but uh, I've, we've put it out there a bunch of times, the feelers for Thinkorswim, um, for um, TradeStation, and for, we already connect to interactive brokers. Uh, but uh, for equities, we, we've been asking about that uh, too. So uh, one of those in the, in the near future, probably. All right. Let's see, more questions here. Okay. All right, Joshua, you want to take a look at the SQC? Yeah, no problem. Uh, or do I use it? Uh, yeah, I, I like I like actually looking at the um, the quotes, the quotes counter. Um, but um, uh, and let me I'll cover that in the trades counter uh, as well and, and why why we show so many different types of data here instead of just traded volume. OK, uh, traded volume is what we're most accustomed to. So that's what I usually demo. 
Uh, but uh, there's all sorts of ways of looking at this and all sorts of ways of building out the dome here in bookmap as well. So if you're used to trading off of um, a, a very specific dome, you can configure it any way you want here. It's all available. You can configure it uh, here, here in bookmap uh, to your liking. All right. Um, uh, the one thing um, before I dive into some more of these questions, uh, Brian, uh, rhythmic, there is an advantage here. Uh, with Rhythmic and then also CQG for some markets as well. And then this is a really nice advantage. Uh, I have full depth of market here. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, if uh, if you're looking at your dome uh, in, um, let's say you're using NinjaTrader, for example, if you look at your dome, you're probably looking at 10 levels of live data on your level two. Okay, it'll your best bid and offer will be you know the first level, level one data, and then you'll probably see a depth up here to like ten or so. Okay, we're just getting more and more transparency as time goes by, and this is really good for us as retail traders. All of this is this entire area here is live right now. So if I zoom vertically, and you can just left click, hold, and drag up and down in your um, uh, in your column. All of these levels here are live, so you'll you'll see you'll see a liquidity change up in some of these levels up here. You'll see some of the numbers change. This is a great advantage, right? Uh, so I understand. Yeah, they're they're adding in here more and more at like 48. They're kind of front running 50 here. Okay. Now we also offer um, for those of you who trade equities, uh, you know, we offer connection uh, to equities and. It's it's really great to see. Uh, let's look at Tesla here. Okay, now this is the bid ask spread. That's why you see it dark in between. Let me continue to zoom out here. Now what I, what I want to show you is something really interesting. Wow, look at that. Look at some of that algorithmic activity. Um, okay, uh, here is let's go to 9:30. Okay, the 9:30 open here. Uh, look at all of these levels here, and I can continue to zoom. Right. Look where they jump in and start providing high liquidity here uh, in uh, in the equities. Right. So at, down at some of these areas, this area, this area here, um, and they're jumping in in between. But as soon as the market opens here, you can see the liquidity picks up tremendously. All of these areas are live, uh, and uh, it's fantastic to see this depth, entire depth of market. So I know that uh, these are targets for uh, uh, longer term price movements. You know, 62. Uh, you know, uh, this area here, we already went, even went through it in the, you know, the first uh, half hour. But then down here, they started to line up again. Now it looks like we're, we're poised to test 55 and then maybe 54 here. Okay. Reading the auction, look at how aggressive they're here at 57 as well, pressing on price. Okay. And we also have more volume trading at lower lows here. So I anticipate 55 to get tested here. All right. Anyway, that's a real quick analysis on Tesla. Um, all right. Let me uh, jump back here. So anyway, that's a, that's one of the nice advantages you get um, with Rhythmic and then CQG. Now, I don't think CQG offers it yet, quite yet for the S&P. I think it's for the uh, COMEX and for the NYMEX. So oil and gold, for example, uh, you'll get full depth. All right. Um, Glenn, I can, I can, um, uh, yeah, we can, we can enter in uh, GE, no problem. Uh, in fact, let me do that, uh, and then let a few minutes uh, pass by here. Okay. Uh, I don't have that data opened up already for uh, GE, so we'll have to uh, open the symbol and then start collecting some data. Okay. Now, the reason that we don't, you know, have a lot of historical data is because we're talking millions of data points here. Um, this is um, uh, not just open, high, low, close. Four data points uh, that that you see, like in that candlestick chart. Uh, we're we're talking, um, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of data points because it's not just um, uh, the traded volume on uh, best bidder offer, but we're now we're looking at full depth of market, and we're looking at all of, all of this here is all live data, and all these data points up here, they're all recorded. So it's a, that's a lot of information, uh, and um, uh, it would uh, 
uh, be, uh, you know, memory intensive uh, if you had to, uh, if you wanted to download. Uh, it would take you a while just to download it. Okay. So anyway, that's why. Uh, and you'll once you open up your book map, you start collecting that data. Okay. All right. Uh, back to some of the questions here. Um, let's see. Yes, I'll look for your email, Ying. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Felix, lining up your higher time frames. Well, it's just um, you know that we. I'm basically using the same kind of analysis that um, you know, looking at structure, uh, uh, rejection, acceptance, uh, sweeping of the book. Uh, into new levels and see if it accepts or rejects. Uh, and I'm using that on the higher time frame, and then I'm just drilling down into the, the uh, lower time frames as well, right? That's how I'm using it. It's totally up to you. Uh, you know, if you're looking at like a Bollinger Band area being hit on a higher time frame, then look at Bookmap. Uh, look at the book. What is it telling you? Are they lining up to buy or sell? Uh, and, uh, you know, that that's going to give you the insight that you need. And that's what's going to help you trade uh, trade uh, uh, with, uh, you know, enhanced uh, and optimized uh, uh, trade execution. Okay. All right. Let's go over. Uh, let's see what else here. Okay. Edwin. Um, What does it mean to you when you see a lot of moving orders like in crude? Um, okay. Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, might not, might need to cover that another time, Edwin. Um, but uh, we maybe we can take a quick look at crude. I mean, we've almost been going for an hour here, so I need to wrap it up. Um, Uh, Leonardo, no, uh, you can use Bookmap 6.1. So um, uh, reach out to uh, Equip Trader uh, down in Brazil. Uh, they'll hook you up. Oh, you're welcome, Elena. Yep. Yep, see you next week. Uh, let's see. Okay, we'll look at GE and then... Um, uh, Joshua, the uh, SQC. Okay, let me let me uh, go over the the columns here quickly. All right, so uh, because there's a lot of good stuff here uh, in the. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Darcy. I really appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of good uh, data here in these columns. Okay, so basically this is the dome, the current order book, and then I have a, another column that's current order book. You can configure all of these the way you want. You can left click, hold and drag uh, by the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, title here. You can even move it over to the other side of the chart if you want. You can even left click, hold and drag all of price. Uh, so very, very easy to build out and customize uh, your columns here very, very quickly. So let's click in some of these. I mean, you can see that I've, I've, I've uh, made uh, two COB columns, one that's numeric and one that is graphical. Okay, just showing the bars histogram of the liquidity, so I know quickly where the where the you know large liquidity is, uh, and there's some add-on indicators that are also important to to view here, um, and uh, so you, you just all you have to do is uh, is format the column, right-click, format column. Let's insert a new column though. Okay, I'll come down here and insert column. Okay, insert one to the right of where I just came from, uh, and then let me uh, right-click here and then note. All these little radio buttons here are different data types. Current order book, volume, trades counter, quotes counter, quotes delta, notes. We have two different kinds, custom notes and cloud notes. You can add your own notes. Uh, and then uh, there's time and sales window as well. All right. So let me um, go to the uh, a quotes counter. Okay. So it's CQC, beautiful profile. Um, and uh, what this is showing here is the number of quotes that refreshed. Why would I be interested in that? It's not trades that have taken place. Uh, it's just showing um, 
uh, where there is a lot of quotes being uh, refreshed uh, back and forth. Well, the reason being is that um, uh, in the in this kind of environment here, uh, it's uh, what's more important uh, for a lot of the algos, and they read this, is activity, action. Okay, it's like it, the the quotes counter is we'll use the analogy of the uh, the trading pit. Okay, back in the day in the trading pit. Uh, you know, something happens, let's say with price or there's some, there's interest in a specific price level and the noise in the pit picks up. They're yelling back and forth and, uh, you know, they're the, I'll be a buyer here. No, I'll be a seller there. Not one transaction needs to occur. However, there's interest at that level and that's what the quotes counter is showing you. All right. And, uh, in this uh, algorithmic environment, uh, that's important uh, for a lot of these algos to read. They want to understand where they can trade, where there is activity uh, and interest in trading. All right. So uh, the quotes counter, the CQC is the quotes counter for this chart range. Okay. Now, if I right click and then I can also choose here a session range or chart range. Let's let's choose session accumulated. So now it's showing me the quotes counter here for the entire session when I opened up Bookmap. Okay, and so let's zoom out a little bit and let's take a look at that. All right. So yeah, here's our, our big, huge, ugly uh, profile uh, of a uh, of our quotes counter. All right. So uh, yikes, uh, it's not uh, not not pretty, not pretty at all. Um, a little bit of a, uh, you know, lower volume node or area here, uh, which you can see as well right here. Uh, it doesn't take much to see that. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, this is where we saw that breakdown right here. Right. And the retest back to it uh, as well. OK, um, so um, let's see the. Um, Uh, well, that's that's what the quotes counter is showing you. Okay, and um, now you can also split this data out as well. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's go to a trades counter and let me um, format it and uh, let me choose uh, bars and numbers. Okay, and then I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to split it out because we have the aggressor classification of it. Right, so let's format it now, and we're going to split it out. Okay, and then let's move it to the forefront here. Okay, and let's then zoom in. Okay, what I'm looking at here now uh, is um, uh, the aggressor. Uh, you know, who, who's more powerful at some of these levels here, the buyers or the sellers? And um, uh, it, this isn't really telling me much right now. So let's let's refresh this button or this this. Um, let's first change it to chart range. Okay, and then let's refresh this. Okay, let's right click. And then choose uh, reset, okay. Uh, and uh, you can uh, you can choose to reset for uh, a scheduled time every single minute or hour or whatever, or at a specific time uh, during the day. So like at the cash open, maybe you want your column to reset, okay. There's a conditional reset as well. I won't cover that right now, uh, but um, uh, and then I also want to double click here, and I can reset it and start afresh. Okay, and then read. Okay, so they're just breaking this little structure here. Let's see if there's more buyers, and if, let's see if they're, they're starting to win the battle here. If you see that, you're going to see more green taking taking place and charging up through this area here. Okay, and we want to see lack of selling, and we, we want to see more buying. Okay, only seven contracts traded right up here. That's not much. We want to see a lot more. Okay, 136. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we need more though. Okay, so now you're starting to read the momentum uh, in the aggressive buying. Okay, a lot of traders really like this view. Okay, and now you can use this in, together with your heat map. So look at your heat map. Uh, where where what might you be targeting? Uh, well, I, I would say maybe around this uh, 42 and a half area. Uh, start to target. It. So we're talking about a real quick scalp here. Uh, less than a point or about a point or so. All right. 
anyway, that's one way uh, to use it. There's just so many different things to do with this tool. Uh, and let's hide that column now. Okay, let's, let me get to a few more questions. Um, all right, and then, the, then we'll wrap it up and call it a week. Uh, yeah, Leonardo, you want to reach out to Equip Trader? Okay. Uh, that's the offering in Brazil. Uh, and uh, and they will help you out. Okay. And you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com and we can forward it on uh, as well. Okay, so that's if you're interested in connecting to the Cedro market, uh, that, that'll be the data feed. That's what you want. Okay, yeah, it's only offered through them. All right. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Adam, okay, yeah, thank you, Adam. That's, uh, re I really appreciate the uh, uh, nice uh, compliments here, kind words. Ha, look at, okay, a little momentum, and we did go up into 42. I, I didn't like it, but, I mean, you know, we did go up to 42 and a half. Um, eh, you know, I mean, just looking at the same stuff we look at, you know, structure broken, and we want to see the aggressive buying. This is not not that insightful, but um, uh, it did follow through nicely. It's good to, good to see. Uh, let's uh, continue on. A few more questions, and we got to wrap this up. We really do. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure I answer all you guys' questions here. Okay. Okay, let's go back to uh, GE. Let's take a look here. Uh, GE's uh, not not a, not a big mover. Not a big mover. Look at look at the uh, liquidity at some of these levels, you know, and, uh, tens of thousands, right? Uh, and um, uh, it's moving like the bonds here, basically. Uh, so uh, y you know, uh, this uh, it can be really really insightful. No no question. I mean, there's a lot of liquidity here. A lot of selling uh, is interested around this 24, 31, and 32, 25, 31, 32. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, let's take a look at Apple, for example. Okay, and uh, you're you're going to start to see as we zoom out, you're going to get a lot lot of insight here uh, into into what uh, uh, this is showing you. Okay, uh, let's go back to the cash open. You can see it here, and uh, move nice move to the upside into higher areas of liquidity here, and then we go straight across, uh, and it's just been consolidating here for a while. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, based on uh, you know, based on the liquidity and and the traded volume here, I, I'm still I'm looking for 58, 158 to get tested here. Uh, we'll see. Uh, what about our test in Tesla? Did we get down to 155? We did indeed. Okay. Uh, our 355. Okay, we were we, we were looking for that, right? Uh, based on what we we're reading here, uh, based on this activity here in the limit order book being aggressive. Okay. And based on the clusters of transactions taking place, looking for uh, testing 55, and we did. All right. Okay, that's everything, guys. All right, well, uh, have a great weekend, and we will catch up with you uh, on Monday. Okay, thanks for coming. Bye-bye.